Hello everyone. Welcome to London AI Meetup Group. So in this Meetup Group, uh, we are bringing uh, every month a lot of interesting topics. Uh, so we are, we are bringing a lot of uh, innovative topic areas, startups, and uh, discussion topics and research areas in AI technology in London. Uh, so this month, uh, we have planned to uh, discuss about deep learning technology and uh, what are the usage of the deep learning technology uh, what are the use cases, what are the tools, and how you can uh, create a deep learning project. Uh, so we are going to use uh, CNN uh, methodology uh, to create this. Uh, so we'll be uh, looking at all in this two days meetup. So every month uh, we are having uh, this kind of monthly meetup uh, to discuss about AI topics and uh, innovative areas within the AI technology scope. Uh, so uh, keep tuning to our meetup group. Uh, so for today's, uh, Meetup, we had around 50 uh, members registered. So we are expecting a few more members to join the live session. Uh, so after that, uh, we can share the recording of this uh, uh, Meetup session uh, to the Meetup group. So you can take a look at it also. So I would like to welcome everyone uh, on behalf of London AI Technology uh, Meetup group. Uh, so as I mentioned, every month uh, we bring a lot of innovative topics. Uh, so this month's topic is uh, deep learning, introduction to deep learning. Uh, so we are we going to discuss about the deep learning technology, use cases and tools. And then uh, the second half of the uh, session, we are going to look at how we can create a deep learning project, a small one. And uh, then uh, in terms of uh, CNN, uh, conventional neural network, uh, what are the tools and technologies needed to create a project like that? And we are going to look at what are the what kind of Python coding involved uh, to build a uh, deep learning project uh, in that area. Okay, so uh, we'll start. Uh, so what is deep learning? So it's a, a subset in the machine learning uh, uh, area, a subset of the AI uh, terminology that can uh, imitate the way of uh, human thinking and the type of the knowledge gaining that's happening in the human mind. So the main, uh, uh, the, uh, the main idea behind the deep learning is uh, setting up a neural network. So neural network is a complex uh, networking model that we can set up uh, in the deep learning terminology. So then within the deep learning uh, itself, there are different techniques uh, that we can have uh, because deep learning is uh, applied uh, to process really complex type of data. Let's say you want to analyze a video, uh, if you want to analyze a audio, if you want to analyze an image like that, a lot of complex type of data sets could be raw data or uh, process data that we can use deep learning methodology. So that's where the neural network comes into play. And we need a lot of computing power in order to uh, train this data as well as a really good data sets and uh, really good tools. So at the moment, you know, uh, in the open source community, there are a really good set of tools out there uh, that we can leverage. So as a, uh, if you are a beginner or if you are a data scientist, if you are coming from AI field or if you are coming from another field. So these tools will be really helpful for you to uh, get started with this. Uh, so uh, if you are completely beginner, I recommend you to uh, get started with some uh, basics of data science, uh, machine learning, uh, things like that before going into deep learning. Uh, because deep learning where we discuss uh, some of the advanced areas in terms of working with uh, complex data structures uh, where there are different use cases that we can have. So the main uh, component in the deep learning is a neural network, how you can set up a neural network and how you can uh, process and how you can get a relevant output. Uh, there are like everyday use cases in the using of this. Uh, very simple uh, use case like, you know, when you go into your email, right? So it will now, uh, predicting uh, next set of words that you might type. Let's say you go to Gmail, uh, when you type some uh, email reply, uh, it will going to predict what is the next uh, set of words that you're going to type. So that is uh, using RNN, we can uh, do that. So it's based on the, the pattern of text that you have typed or that other users have typed. Uh, based on that, there's a certain model is created. So there's a language uh, based uh, deep learning model. We are based on that, we can predict next set of words. So likewise, there are a lot of uh, projects, uh, industrial level uh, and also research level 
are available in the deep learning. So deep learning area is a quite a vast area where uh, we can use for research purpose. There are a lot of uh, research projects are there uh, because compared to machine learning, deep learning have a high uh, research capabilities. A majority of the research, AI research in the world happening on the deep learning space. And uh, also there are a lot of applications side, the so Google, like companies uh, investing billions of dollars uh, in deep learning side uh, to, uh, uh, in terms of developing tools, in, the, in terms of developing infrastructure, in terms of developing uh, advanced mechanisms, they are investing. So for example, if you look at TensorFlow tool, it's a, one of the main uh, deep learning tool uh, that is also uh, coming out from that uh, Google company. So likewise, there are a lot of innovation happen uh, because of the, the technology innovations that we are seeing every day. So deep learning uh, six uh, center of all these uh, techniques because it's uh, pay a wider role uh, because the things we can do in the deep learning is quite massive. Uh, a lot of areas we can look at using the deep learning mechanism. So this uh, particular meetup session, we are going to discuss the use cases, tools that is there and how you can create a simple project. So you can see, uh, we discussed some of the tools that is out there. Uh, TensorFlow is one of the main tool that we can use uh, for deep learning and machine learning. Uh, so this is uh, released by Google and it's open source. So TensorFlow providing a powerful deep learning uh, set of framework where we can easily set up a neural network and we can use, uh, we can create different kind of a, a neural network techniques, uh, deep learning techniques using TensorFlow. Uh, so TensorFlow right now having different versions, you can run in mobile, you can run in browser, uh, you can run a standard version in the web uh, like that. There are different versions of TensorFlow out there and also they keep updating uh, every year, like there are certain uh, time period. So they are keep updating uh, the version of the TensorFlow uh, where you can get the latest benefits uh, using this package. So if you are going to uh, deep learning, as a professional developer or hobbyist or student. Uh, so it's recommended to go to go through a TensorFlow tool because there are a lot of deep learning techniques cover in the TensorFlow tool. Uh, then uh, we have this deep learning kit. Uh, so deep learning kit uh, supports the Apple developer environments. Uh, so if you are developing uh, mobile applications like in iOS platform, so right now we know uh, these mobile devices that we are using have a lot of computing power in it. Uh, so because of that, now these mobile ML uh, kits are there for both Android and iOS. So this deep learning kit uh, is supporting for the Android uh, develop iOS development where uh, we can use some of the image classifications, language understanding, those kind of uh, base models are there where we can use this uh, to identify and directly uh, provide that. Because otherwise, what we need to do is we need to create it in the backend uh, in the Python and we need to set up a server and we need to create API uh, to communicate with the mobile app. So that will take a lot of process uh, to do that, but this uh, will help to create the model, the standard model and the behavior uh, within the device itself. But uh, there's always a limitation. Remember that because mobile devices have limitation, even though it's powerful enough, uh, still there are limitations uh, compared to servers. Uh, so because of that, there are certain limitations that's there. But if you have, if you are working on a small scale project, uh, that we can use mobile uh, versions much more effectively. Then we have this uh, Convenet JS, uh, that is a, a JS JavaScript based uh, neural network. So now uh, because of you know there are a lot of web technologies coming up these days. Uh, I think you heard the terminology called Web three, uh, supporting blockchain technology. So because of that, a lot of new uh, web interfaces, web related technologies coming up. Uh, so because of that, uh, even I mentioned uh, uh, the TensorFlow is supporting the browser uh, based uh, neural network and the browser based compilation. So similarly, uh, this is from uh, Kernonet JS. This is from the Stanford University. Uh, so they have developed uh, this toolkit to support uh, deep learning in the browser. So what is the advantage? You don't need a high-end uh, server. You don't need a like a high-end machine. Uh, even you don't need a mobile. You just need a browser uh, and you can do the deep learning. Uh, so this is still in the research space, but it's under MIT license. So you can use these uh, frameworks uh, in your applications. 
so you can uh, I will show example in that. So you can uh, search by this keyword uh, convenet JS. If you search Google with this keyword, uh, you will get uh, to the official site, which is under Stanford uh, CS uh, domain. So where uh, you can see there are certain demos like, you know, uh, when you're discussing deep learning, uh, the image identification, classification in this data sets, those are the, all the standard projects we are working on. So if you click this, uh, you can see uh, this uh, deep learning model. You can see it's start in the training process in the browser itself. Uh, and you can see the training happening real time in the browser and it's starting uh, identifying uh, the uh, set of data sets. So we'll discuss some of these things uh, in the, uh, the next few minutes, uh, but uh, I want to highlight this tool. So this tool is available uh, to you to develop this within the browser itself. So that's why right now uh, these technologies are cross-platform. So you can use in the browser, just like a JavaScript or the server side. Uh, then in a mobile, uh, even embedded devices, IoT, those kind of things. So likewise, this uh, the 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 model is getting more lighter and more advanced. Yeah, we can do a lot of things using the uh, using these technology. So you can see real time training happening at the moment for the MNES uh, image identification uh, data set. Uh, so you can see uh, the output in the real time and the, this uh, training is creating. So it's still not completing; it's still going to uh, the process. Uh, so I will share the URL in the chat as well. So you can uh, take a look at that framework. Uh, so it's a really lightweight kind of a framework that we can, uh, you can take a look at it. Uh, let me share it in the chat. Okay. So uh, that is the JavaScript framework. Uh, remember there are many uh, deep learning frameworks are there. Some are experimental level because there's a huge research component also associated with that. So as a part of the research, uh, PhD students professors, uh, uh, lecturers working on these areas, researchers. Uh, so uh, this could be also the one I just showed could be also part of a, that kind of a research project. Uh, so uh, that is another example. So likewise, there are standard projects and uh, for, uh, the, there are like tech companies, large tech companies working on these tools and there are open source tools like that. Okay, uh, then we have this Microsoft Cognitive Toolkit uh, that is from uh, Microsoft. So they are providing a Set of tools kit uh, and they have built uh, their own uh, kind of a, a framework uh, for you to uh, analyze images uh, analyze audio files language identification things like that so you can use this uh, keyword to search and you can get more information and another popular deep learning package is Keras. so it's a deep learning library that have minimum functionality so if you look at creating a neural network from scratch it will take a lot of time uh, you need to know a lot of things. If you uh, just use Python language and the neural network, it will be hundreds of lines you need to write. But in KRS, it's just tens of lines, two lines of code. Uh, you can create a neural network, simple as that. Uh, so it's like a, uh, like a writing a class, like in programming, it's very simplified. So you can write a deep learning uh, neural network in a minimum uh, set of functionalities on few lines of code. And on top of that, uh, it's running on top of the uh, TensorFlow or Tiano. So these are some of the dependency uh, packages. So you need to have TensorFlow installed. So on top of that, we can run KRS. Uh, so KRS use underlying uh, TensorFlow. Uh, so that's why, uh, so then uh, if you're using KRS, you don't need to use TensorFlow. You can just use the, the language that uh, the techniques provided in that. So it's very simplified format. So that's why, a lot of developers, beginners use this also because uh, in few lines of code, you can uh, create a neural network and you can get the exactly the same result as sign writing uh, 200, 300 lines of code. Then we have Torch, uh, that is PyTorch. Uh, one of the advantage of uh, this uh, package is this is supporting a graphical uh, processing uh, where we have CUDA-based graphical pro processing uh, where this CUDA framework is really important especially uh, in terms of video analytics and processing. Uh, so this is coming from the NVIDIA uh, graphic family. So they have developed this technology, GPU-based training, uh, especially if you want to do a high-end calculation, you want to use NVIDIA CUDA platform. Uh, let me show that. So NVIDIA CUDA platform is a, a really a high-end uh, 
platform. So they have uh, their own like a toolkit uh, also. Uh, so a lot of uh, deep learning packages use this uh, dependency toolkit, right? So this is uh, developed on C++. So this is the uh, NVIDIA uh, developer. So you can see the CUDA toolkit. So it's a, you can use for GPU accelerated kind of application. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, new features they are uh, building on. Uh, so a lot of advanced analytics, uh, things like that. Uh, so we can use this for deep learning uh, to uh, analyzing and processing uh, the high volume, high scale kind of uh, models. Uh, so CUDA platform is really useful. Uh, there are some technical challenges when you are uh, implementing uh, CUDA. For example, uh, this use C++ runtime, uh, but you know, most of the time, our developments, uh, we are using uh, Python. Uh, so on top of Python, we need to have C++ runtime. Uh, so there are some technical challenges, like when you actually deploying it, uh, then the servers also, we need to install C++ runtimes and uh, things like that. And also they need to have the same comp uh, compatibility. Uh, so in that time, uh, there could be some additional charges that you need to pay uh, also. So you need to keep that in mind uh, in terms of uh, these deploying these uh, uh, projects. Uh, but in terms of building the projects, you can do it much more easily. Any platform is supporting Linux, Mac, Windows, doesn't matter. Uh, only thing is uh, you need to have relevant kind of computing. Or you can use a cloud environment. Uh, in a cloud environment also, you can develop this uh, much more effectively, right? So now we can see there are a lot of options out there uh, for developers to develop uh, deep learning application. And uh, nowadays, these deep learning applications are actually just like a regular program, right? So uh, just, you know, like a normal programmers work on uh, mobile application, desktop application, likewise. Uh, so these tools now become uh, everyday, uh, like a accessory where we can, uh, all the developers can easily understand these technologies. Yeah. They can use it uh, for their uh, application development. But of course there are a lot of concepts and a lot of uh, theories and a lot of uh, uh, techniques are there that you need to practice. Uh, then once you practice that, uh, you can use the standard programming technique uh, to develop these uh, applications, right? So NVIDIA CUDA is a one platform uh, that uh, is a C++ place, as I mentioned. Uh, it's a really uh, high-end platform and a hardware-based platform. So you need to have uh, NVIDIA GPU uh, in your runtime, could be your machine or mobile device or a server, uh, then only you can work on that. But it's performing, it's giving a high end kind of a uh, computing. There are a lot of uh, kind of advancement. You can use that. So, uh, other than that, there are other libraries are there. So, if you look at specific areas, then they, we have a lot of other libraries, right? Uh, so, they have developed uh, different uh, libraries. So, as I mentioned, I mentioned different companies spending uh, like a lot of uh, money to work on that. So, like you can search tech company and AI. So for example, you can go to Facebook AI uh, and you can search uh, like that. So if you go to ai.facebook.com and you can see what kind of AI research they are working on, uh, what kind of research projects uh, they are working on. All right, so then they have built a tool set. Uh, they have research, uh, the research collaborations. You can read the research papers. Likewise, all these companies having an AI division uh, so where they have working on their own that's supporting with their initiatives, uh, these AI techniques, right? You can go through these things as well. There are a lot of things to read, a lot of things to go through uh, to get really good understanding and familiarity with the deep learning space. Then we look at some of the applications, use cases that we can develop using this. Uh, so we can use uh, deep learning for identifying codes for detection. Uh, computer vision, voice AI, uh, natural language processing. Uh, so a lot of language identification, uh, speaking. You know, now uh, we have AI bots, uh, the deep learning bots that can speak and communicate. Uh, and also we can understand the language. We can translate the language, right? Then we have autonomous vehicles, using e-commerce, entertainments, healthcare. A lot of use cases are there. So next slides will be going in, de in details with these uh, topics. So uh, first one is code detection. So you can see all the organizations in the world uh, lost a lot of money due to fraud detection. It could be financial frauds or uh, other kind of insurance fraud. So there are 
using uh, data science deep learning techniques, we can uh, save a lot of money for the organization. Uh, it could be voice, uh, we can identify from the voice, we can identify from the uh, footage, CCTV footage, or we can identify from the data set uh, or the financial transactions, so like that, uh, where we can identify this before actually it's happening or uh, it's happened like uh, very quite recently, right? But uh, normally faults are detected uh, after it's happened. So before that, we can uh, make a prediction and we can predict that this, there's a high chance this is a, a fraudulent transaction. There's a high chance this is a fraudulent kind of a conversation. So likewise, uh, we can detect that. So there are a lot of kind of uh, deep learning packages, uh, deep learning uh, techniques out there to identify that based on the data set. So it will be saving uh, billions of dollars for organizations, let's say insurance companies, uh, financial companies. So likewise, it can save a lot of uh, money for this organization because you can search how much they are going to lose in terms of fraud detection yearly. Uh, all of the organization have uh, those kind of issues. Then customer relationship management, uh, CRM. So now if you look at a lot of tools out there, especially the SaaS tools, right? So they have a lot of AI capabilities. So AI become a known feature of all these softwares, right? If you look at any uh, software out there, it could be a SaaS software or cloud software. Now uh, they are going to integrate some form of AI into these uh, products. So that's why they call AI enabled. So any software that now we are using, having AI enabled, if you look at uh, Microsoft uh, software ecosystem, like PowerPoint and all this, also they have AI enabled features. Then Visual Studio also they have AI enabled uh, automatic type uh, port suggestion tools like that. So likewise, we can use for CRM, customer relationship management, uh, to understanding the data insights, uh, leads, prospects, and we can prepare insights on that uh, in terms of business intelligence we can do, but deep learning become more advanced where we can uh, provide uh, more uh, insight and we can predict uh, the, the relevant uh, prospect regarding that customer, whether there's a high chance or whether this customer is going to buy or if they are going to buy, what is the amount that they are going to buy, things like that we can have. So most of the softwares that releasing uh, these days having these AI capabilities. So where we can use these AI capabilities. So if you're also building an AI software, you need to, uh, it's a known that uh, feature that we need to enable AI capabilities into these uh, software. Uh, that's uh, one of the main things that out there. So that's why uh, there are like AI startups, AI companies are there, even software companies, software startups, they also uh, enabling AI features into their packages. Uh, then computer vision, well, this is one of the biggest area of deep learning. There are thousands and thousands of startups out there uh, with a lot of money, a lot of uh, invested into these areas, uh, computer vision, identifying uh, vision-based problems, uh, image recognition, video recognition, like that. There are a lot of uh, things identifying uh, from that because if you look at image or video stream, this is a really complex set of data. Uh, so image containing, you know, pixels of data, uh, millions of pixels where it containing each pixel have uh, the one and zero data set. So we need to analyze this data set analyze the pattern in order to make a, a prediction. So if you look at a video, a video have per second on average 25 images. So it is even more complex. And if you look at SD video, uh, that containing uh, the high volume, high quality kind of video. So if you want to do anal analysis of a real time uh, video, let's say you are doing a sport analytics software, we want to analyze a football match and uh, see what is the performance of uh, this player, performance of the uh, this player, uh, player one and player two, that is really important information for coaches. So where we can use the uh, technology like computer vision to analyze that and provide the intelligent kind of analytics back to the coaches or the necessary responsible person. We can use the similar technique in other sports as well. Uh, so where sport, uh, if you look at the match, the specific match, the, the video quality is quite high. So HD video or high definition, uh, 4K, 8K, Kind of a video where uh, the data volume is quite high and the data streaming is quite fast. So if you want to provide real-time analytics when the match is happening, there's uh, these kind of uh, things that we can do in the next uh, 
part of the match, uh, then uh, these analytics need to be much more fast and efficient, right? There are a lot of, uh, you can see the similar softwares out there that doing this. So they have uh, accomplished these things using deep learning itself. They have created a deep learning model uh, that can identify these things uh, to, uh, to use it in the matches, right? So that's the one use case. Then we have voice AI uh, that can identify voice. So if you look at uh, DeepMind uh, also, then Google also investing Alexa, uh, like uh, voice AI technologies that we can talk and also we can have automated conversation. Now we have uh, AI models that can generate voice. So you can type a text and you can generate natural voice. It's not uh, text to speech, it's just generating natural voice. And there are some models that can sing, that can generate music, things like that, that can draw art. Uh, so those kind of uh, uh, deep learning techniques are now possible. There are a lot of use cases, a lot of projects are there. Some are in the research level, some are in the, uh, the uh, product level. So the product level, we can actually build a product and we can sell, we can license it and we can sell to uh, the mass market as a SaaS product, or we can uh, sell to a B2B market as a business uh, tool. Uh, natural language uh, processing. This is also another important area, NLP. Uh, so we are planning to do a separate session on the NLP as well. We are, uh, it's a quite interesting area in terms of identifying languages, uh, identifying dialects. Uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, things uh, in order to identify the language, language understanding. You know, companies like Google invest billions of dollars in terms of identifying languages because there are hundreds of languages, thousands of close to thousands of languages out there. And the way you speak is completely different. Uh, the dialects, uh, all these things, pronunciation, uh, everything is different uh, into different region, different person like that. So these things are really uh, important. Uh, so there are deep learning models that we can do to identify language also identify what is the next kind of discussion that person going to discuss, talk, right? Uh, so then we can create like a bot application or voice bot application. So, you know, now uh, if you go to website or a lot of applications, you have a chat bot that you communicate. Uh, it's not a real person. It's an automated bot uh, that you type something and it's communicate with you. Uh, so that is use natural language processing uh, to reply uh, intelligently based on your uh, inputs that you have provided. So we can use uh, this uh, is a one use case. So likewise, there are a lot of use cases that we can use. Data refining. So if you, uh, uh, so you can see if you have a lot of raw data, uh, then it's hard for data scientists to identify pattern and draw insight. So we can use uh, deep learning tools to actually uh, like tag and identify, uh, putting tags and identify these data sets. Uh, like large volume data set. Sometimes data is uh, corrupted, then you need to identify that. So likewise, uh, there are a lot of use cases in that. So let's say there's a satellite image, uh, you want to identify for production, things like that. Uh, then there are a lot of large volume of data. So we can use deep learning technology to analyze and prepare this data according to a relevant format. Uh, autonomous vehicle is another use case where you know uh, there are a lot of deep learning uh, techniques are there in terms of image identification and recognition. Apart from that, there are some reinforcement learning also used in the autonomous vehicle section where uh, we can uh, train a relevant environment and we can get uh, the, uh, the training uh, built on top of that. So there's a, a technology called OpenAI. So using OpenAI team-like technologies, uh, we can do that. Uh, we did a, a session earlier about uh, reinforcement learning. Uh, you can take uh, our meetup group, uh, there's a YouTube link of the recording. You can take, uh, you can check out that as well. Uh, there are some deep learning components are also used in autonomous vehicle. Apart from that, uh, the reinforcement learning also used in this space. Uh, then financial modeling. Uh, if you want to prepare the financial modeling, create a model that uh, going to predict a certain values or certain uh, the predictions, we can use that. And the healthcare sector, we can use uh, for healthcare chatbot or caretaker automated diagnosis or identifying patients' uh, diseases. Uh, you know, there are a lot of researchers happening on uh, identifying cancer, things like skin cancer detection. Uh, there are a lot of projects and there are a lot of successful projects where you can uh, send a photo and uh, you can identify and predict whether you have a chance of skin cancer 
So likewise, early detection is possible because otherwise these tools are expensive and these tests are expensive. So before that, you can just submit a photo and this to uh, AI, AI uh, deep learning model can predict uh, is there a chance for certain disease uh, that's happening before actually it's happening. So likewise, we can identify that, but there are a lot of uh, other guidelines there, especially remember when you are using healthcare data, uh, there are UK regulations uh, in healthcare in NHS. You need to go through all these regulations before actually building that uh, because patient information are quite, uh, 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 this, this you need to uh, specifically uh, mention and you need to have a certain guidelines in place and uh, not like uh, other data set. Uh, so even other data set, you have to follow uh, these guidelines uh, where uh, the AI ethics and uh, uh, how you can save the data, how you process the data, those things are quite valuable these days. There are separate uh, discussions and uh, forums are there to discuss, maybe we can help uh, we can have a separate session about that as well. Now there are a lot of uh, government regulation and AI frameworks are coming in, in terms of data governance, how the data is going to use, how the data is going to save. Even uh, now there are uh, techniques from PwC on auditing a model. So how you can audit a model, uh, things like that. Uh, so yeah, we can discuss in a separate session, but you need to think about uh, those things as well when you're creating uh, these kind of models. Uh, nowadays, these things are, very important as well. Uh, E-commerce side also, we can use uh, for deep learning models or recommendation, advanced identifications, uh, person or the products identification, things like that we can use. Uh, and also if you are doing a delivery kind of a product, uh, uh, if you have a map, you can do the map, uh, uh, the shortest path, identifying the shortest path, the route, things like that. Otherwise, we know we use Google APIs, but without that, we can create our own a routing technique to route the user into the shortest path based on the location. Then uh, there are Netflix used for personalizations. Uh, you know, there are a lot of use cases on that. Uh, then other than that, uh, there are deep learning uh, techniques that we can use to generate music. Uh, so this deep learning model can generate music on its own. So where uh, there are some uh, use cases that we can create like small uh, uh, sounds and also like complex music like that. Yeah, we can generate uh, this uh, kind of generate, uh, generate uh, so different techniques are there to generate uh, these audio patterns. And then it's used in advertising, uh, how we can identify the person's behavior, a uh, person's uh, patterns of uh, buying patterns. Based on that, we can uh, use the target advertising using advanced deep learning models. Uh, Google advertising may be using it, uh, not exactly sure about that, but there are different techniques. So if, if you are going to really buy it, you are going to buy it, right? No matter the price. So if you can really pinpoint that, uh, then it's all about selling, right? Uh, so identifying that niche area for that person, right? Because if person really wants that product, they are going to buy it. It's only that product going to go to the buyer, that connection, uh, how you can advertise in the proper place or proper audience, right? So that's, there are projects on that uh, you can, I do additional reading and look at that. So the today's session, we focus in the deep learning in CNN, conventional neural network. Uh, conventional neural network is a method that we are using to identify images. Uh, so we can classify image and we can detect the images. So if you look at the image, this is really complex uh, because image containing a lot of data sets and it could be a lot of different things. So for example, let's say in this, we are identifying animal but uh, you can have an image with mountain or image with uh, uh, like a different uh, sea, but it's not animal. So likewise, there are a lot of uh, things are there in terms of identifying these things. So that's why we can uh, do the training of a deep learning model. There are different techniques uh, you can see here in the conventional neural network. So we have a conventional layer where we can uh, set up this initial identification of the uh, image, right? So we can, extract the image piece by piece, and we can uh, go through this uh, process of identifying and uh, finding uh, any patterns. So uh, the deep learning or machine learning, these techniques are all about statistics, like how we can identify a certain pattern. Uh, then the next image that we are submitting follows that pattern, then there is a successful match. So it's all about uh, numbers, right? So if you drill down to mathematics, how you can analyze a certain pattern or certain 
kind of a the similarity that's how uh, this is written down but if you uh, like prepare more and more uh, like that's why the neural network is doing a lot of uh, training that means it's learning more and more about that image what is the pattern what is the different techniques like that so the more the better so let's say you have 100 image versus 100000 image so 100000 image will give a better result because it know all the variation of the 100000 image and all the patterns that it need to identify based on that it can provide a better prediction than 100 image so the conventional uh, layer is uh, one of the major element in the uh, neural network of CNN, where it can do image filtering, it can identify the features of the image, uh, if there's any corruption uh, like that. So it's create uh, this layer of conventional layer, where it identify each of these pixels and the pattern of this pixel, because uh, the initial neural network cannot identify if that's uh, like a, as an image, like it's like our, mind right so it not we, we uh, identify it we are connecting it from something we know right so likewise it's starting to learn like that is the training process uh, so it's identified piece by piece uh, this is the image and this is the, this type of image like that so more images it sees it's try to understand this is matching this pattern and it's not to identify that then based on different techniques so we have cnn rnn uh, then gn uh, Likewise, there are a lot of different deep learning uh, practice or techniques are there. Uh, so here we look at only the conversion net neural network. Maybe uh, in a different uh, session, we can discuss other uh, techniques as well. So in this, as I mentioned, the conversion layer is the one that we are generating. Uh, so that's identify the, uh, the image features filtering this technique. So there are a lot of uh, options that we can select when you are uh, setting up this. Uh, so this can use not only for images, even video analytics, because I mentioned uh, video is a uh, 25 images per second, so that we can also use. So then there are different uh, techniques within that. So when you are setting up a CNN, uh, this option, uh, this configuration, we need to set up uh, the things like pooling, relu. So these are different like uh, the uh, techniques that we can do to further optimize it, further uh, the remove the uh, errors, right? Remove the the noise, things like that. So there are a certain set of things that we can do to uh, identify this image correctly and create a model from that. So let's say we have image of a cat, uh, that then we have image of another set, set, but we want to identify or classify uh, this cat image. Then if you uh, submit another cat like that, but not the same cat, but identify that there's a similarity, there's a pattern matching that cat. So likewise, uh, this is how it's going to uh, set up. So uh, when you are implementing with the latest open source technology, so where you don't need to go more in depth, like uh, all piece by piece, right? Uh, because now we have a lot of tools and technologies out there uh, to uh, build upon this, right? Uh, so uh, one tool is, as I mentioned, TensorFlow. And on top of that, we can use uh, maybe KRS, PyTorch, things like that uh, to build. So the project we are using is uh, image, the animal detection. So we have uh, thousands of images we are going to identify, and then we are going to predict uh, based on that, what is the correct uh, image. So they say, we, uh, so it, we are creating a new model uh, that can identify these set of uh, animal images. Then when uh, a new user upload the new image, it can say that is uh, matches uh, that pattern. Uh, so uh, like that we can identify these kind of different images so now uh, on top of that there are more advanced techniques like uh, more dynamic kind of images so categories and things like that but this is a starting point so the starting point we can identify a certain image or certain type of images but it's limited to that it's not like uh, every uh, image in the world that we can identify with a simple uh, cnn is only a limited set of images uh, or one more image or a couple of types that we can identify with the CNN. But there are other techniques that we can combine multiple CNN or more uh, big, bigger kind of a neural network where we can do uh, different things, right? So it's, it's really uh, solving a problem, unique problem. So deep learning can solve a one unique problem at a time. 
So if you want to identify a certain image, certain type of image, it can solve that. That doesn't mean it can identify all of all the world, images in the world. That we need to have another technique to connect. And of course, it takes a lot of computation power as well. But there are a lot of use cases. Let's say you are using that to identify insects uh, in the home. Uh, so we can use that. So then uh, in the cameras uh, that we have in the home, there's an alarm going to trigger if there's insect is going. Or let's say there's a building maintenance. Then if there's any crack or something like that, there's an uh, alarm going to trigger. So in that use case, we don't need to identify other things, right? If you want to identify insects, it's only the number of insects that is there. We don't need to identify other any other things. If you want to identify doing the uh, building maintenance kind of a machine learning, deep learning model, then you need to identify the relevant kind of problems that we can have. A broken elevator or electric spark, uh, the, some broken window or something. So there are some list of things, but not apart from that. So that's why these things are really useful, where it can solve a certain problem uh, better than the human, because we cannot look at uh, every uh, 24 hour uh, on the same location and identify that, right? It's not happening like that. So where these models can look at 24 seven uh, and they can identify that because uh, it's just computing. It's a set of instructions that running in the program computer. So where it can run 24 seven uh, and it can identify any of that uh, based on the different use case. So we'll uh, go to the demo. Uh, we are, as I mentioned, uh, we are going to use uh, uh, Google Colab. Uh, so Google Colab is a really uh, useful tool where we can uh, develop everything uh, from the cloud, right? So you can search Google Colab in the internet and you can uh, go to the, uh, from here. So the Google Colab uh, provides you a really easy to use environment like this where uh, you can see the URL colab.research.google.com. So it is provide a really uh, easy to use environment uh, to you to get started and start with the development. And uh, another plus thing is like this tool, uh, we can use free of charge and they are supporting uh, most of the deep learning techniques. Uh, some of the GPU uh, rendering also, GPU computing also it's supporting. And most of the deep learning techniques we can easily test out uh, in the uh, in this tool much more if, uh, effectively. Otherwise, you need to download the Anaconda tool and uh, you need to use this in your uh, desktop environment. Uh, but this tool make it much easier because you can just log in using your uh, Google account and then you can create a new uh, Jupyter Notebook file and you can start building your application. You don't need to download any software or anything. It's like creating a new uh, file and you can start working on that. So here uh, we can like start with uh, installing uh, so you can say install TensorFlow, right? Uh, so this is a TensorFlow tool. So we can just use the command called uh, pip install TensorFlow. So you see in this, uh, it's going to install the TensorFlow tool. Uh, so you can see uh, uh, there are some limitations, but uh, we can easily install standard packages and standard dependencies, uh, even uh, if you are, and if you are uh, using, uh, some advanced packages, you can use that. Right, if you have any questions, you can ask. If you have any questions, uh, you can ask. So here you can see uh, it's installed within a couple of seconds, right? Uh, so it's successfully installed, right? Okay, so now we can uh, use the PIP, uh, the TensorFlow command. So now uh, we'll use TensorFlow. So we can say import TensorFlow as TF uh, from uh, TensorFlow, tensorflow.keras. So as I mentioned, we are using Keras for this uh, particular demo, Keras. And we can import uh, relevant data set right uh, and we can import uh, layers and models right then uh, to visualize uh, what you are doing and uh, to identify these things uh, we can use uh, uh, the visualization package where we can say import uh, matplotlib 
matplotlib dot py plot as a plt and then finally we can import numpy as np right uh, so like that uh, we can import these things right okay uh, so then uh, we can uh, use the data set so we are going to use the data set uh, so this data set containing a set of images so let me show the data set first so we are going to use uh, this data set uh, so this data set uh, called uh, CIFAR 10 data set. So this is containing, uh, here you can see uh, 60,000 uh, images, 30 by 32 by 32 images uh, like this. So we have images of airplane, automobile, bird, cat, deer, dog, like that. Uh, so we are using this uh, data set. We, have, uh, we try to uh, classify this uh, using CNN. And then uh, when you upload a new image, it's going to identify from that, right? We are going to train a CNN and uh, it's going to classify uh, from that and it's going to identify that image, right? So we can see it's a data set uh, that we are going to use. So we can uh, import this data set, right? We can import this data set from here. So we can say uh, something like this. Uh, so we can, let me copy the code. Right, so we can get the data set like this. Uh, uh, this is the data set, uh, say if they are 10, uh, and we can then get into the parameters like this, right? So you can see it's downloading uh, from the data set, uh, Toronto edu uh, CS uh, from that server. Uh, and you can see uh, this is the uh, size of that. So uh, even though it's mentioned 60,000 image, we have 50,000. It's a train, yeah. So the 10,000 will be going into the testing. Uh, so other one is for the train, right? Uh, so we have these uh, images and then uh, we can start doing some training and then we can uh, start classifying these images. So we can classify this according to our data sets. So what is the data set we are having? So we have a couple of data set. Uh, so in that I have shown you earlier as well. So we have airplane, automobile, bird, cat, deer, dog, frog, likewise. So we can uh, then create a class or feature uh, to uh, set up this specific image. Uh, then uh, we can uh, see what is the data set also, like the input image, we can see. Uh, once you uh, finalize that, we can start creating the uh, model. So we can start creating the neural network. So in the neural network, uh, there are multiple layers. So if you uh, look at the slide, you can see uh, there are like multiple layers uh, that we can set up, right? So we need to set up these multiple layers uh, that we call uh, uh, different like layers uh, where we can set up that. So we are using KRS, remember? So the KRS uh, make it that process much simpler because if you use TensorFlow, uh, it's a different technique. If you didn't use any of this and just use Python, uh, then it'll be like, a uh, lot of code, a uh, lot of technique you need to implement. But here, KRS make it much more simplified where you can easily mention these layers. And then there are other properties like activation and optimizer. Uh, these are uh, making the process much smoother. If there are any like uh, roadblocks or things like that, it's going to reduce those things. So there are certain activation functions uh, called ReLU, softmax, things like that we can set up and certain optimizer options to reduce the, the noise and things like that we can have. So once you finalize that, we can uh, fit, that means we can train, we can start training this model and we can finalizing that process, right? Uh, so uh, since we don't have enough time, so I will show the uh, working uh, example, right? So we can see here, uh, we are starting with the installation of the uh, TensorFlow package. Uh, then uh, we are doing the import, right? So we are using KRS layer. So when you are using KRS, you don't need to implement TensorFlow code. It's just KRS code uh, that we can install. Then uh, we are uh, loading the data set. This is the data set, 50,000 data images we are sending to training. 
10,000 images we are using for testing. Then here we are checking that uh, shape of the image like this. And uh, here we are doing a, a training of five uh, like that. Uh, we are checking the, the uh, elements. And then uh, we are using uh, this to get the size, right tree shape uh, like that. Then uh, using that, we are getting the uh, white train and the white test. And we are setting up the classes. So here you can see uh, we have these classes, right? Uh, then uh, we can visualize here. Uh, we can visualize uh, the image, what's out there. So you can see uh, this is a sample image on the train. So still we didn't start any process. We just identify the image. We prepare the data. Uh, we got the X train. Uh, that means we have four options, right? So we have a training and a testing. So the training data set is the one that we do the training and testing data set, which we want to uh, check and see uh, the process is successful or not, because it's, there's always a success rate. Uh, what is the accuracy of your model? So we need to do that. So that's why we have this uh, training and testing data set. So here you can see we have the uh, training data set and the testing data set. So the testing data set we are using for evaluation, training data set we are using for training the data. That is same for machine learning as well. Uh, we discussed that in a previous uh, session as well in the machine learning session. But after this point, so we still we are looking at the data. What is the data? What is the format of the data? Things like that. So here you can see we are plotting the data like that. So this is one example that is frog, another example truck like that. So this is the place we start uh, creating our the CNN layers. So here you can see we are starting with uh, creating our first uh, layers, uh, setting up the shape 32 by 32, that's the image size. And uh, here we are creating the dense complexity. Uh, and uh, here we are adding a couple of layers, right? So this is creating a first set of uh, layers for the CNN. And these are some of the activation functions. So the activ there are a couple of like different activation functions are there. Uh, so there are uh, different uh, functions options are there. So these functions helps to uh, like um, optimize our data set uh, and create a really good kind of a working. And that means once you end a certain learning, it will activate the next learning. It's like, a, you know, in the brain, how neuron works. So once uh, the one of thought finish, the next thought start, something like that. So the activation function will trigger the next uh, part. Once it ended, it will uh, start the next part. So then uh, based on the different activation functions, uh, the process, the, the, the way it works, going to be have, uh, like minor changes. So that is uh, going to affect the final result. Then uh, here we can use the uh, optimizer uh, to loss. Like if there's any uh, like a data loss or things like that, we can use the optimizer. There are like Adam optimizer, I see diesel error many optimizer methods are there. Uh, then uh, these are the metrics. And then uh, once you do that, we can use the fit. Uh, fit means we can uh, fit this data. That means that we can start do the training, right? So here you can see the training happen. And we still, uh, we can see there are some loss and initially the accuracy is 0.3%, right? Uh, like that, it's a very beginning of the training. So this is a very start, first line of the training. Uh, there's a huge loss and uh, the accuracy is quite low, but when it's going to end, uh, so uh, there are a lot of, you can see 1,500, uh, then uh, accuracy is uh, increased into the 0.49, like that. Uh, so that is the just the first layer, right? That is just the first layer. So if it is a machine learning, yeah, it's stopping from there. It's just one kind of a training batch. But deep learning not going to stop from there because why? This is just the first layer, but uh, it's not going to start from that. We are we have additional layers and we can have a multiple this kind of layers. So once you uh, train and prepare your data, those data set can go into the second layer so that's how uh, complex that deep learning going to create so it create this multiple layers of a uh, network uh, which is called a neural network uh, to set up the more accuracy so the output result of this where we can connect with other layers so here uh, in this case we have uh, defining it here the multiple layers right okay right so after that you can see 
so here uh, the report is there. So you can see what is the result. So here the classification uh, report, right like that. Uh, so last report is uh, around uh, 50%, right? Around 50% accuracy is there, but still the 50% accuracy we cannot use, right? Uh, you know, uh, to be an acceptable project, we need to have at least 80%, 90% accuracy in the project. So you can see uh, now we are going to the second uh, layers. So where we start with the other set of features in the CNA. So you can see in here I mentioned we have different kind of techniques. The internal layers are there when you are creating uh, this CNN. So that is how when these things start. So here uh, after this, right? Uh, so, so here you can see uh, after this, we are starting with the conversion commercial uh, layer where you can see uh, we are using the uh, the model uh, layers that we created earlier and the shape then we have the pooling and we have another conversion layer then uh, we are using another layer to dense so that is called CNN right it is going to compile again using Adam optimizer and getting the accuracy so now uh, this one we are using uh, again uh, training and uh, you can see they start uh, of the training like this and then uh, you are going a lot of iteration so this process can take some time uh, because this data set also bigger uh, this is taking uh, quite a big of time so now what's happened so you can see now loss is going into 0.5 uh, your model accuracy going into 0.8 so your model accuracy is increased uh, it's almost double right so it's now uh, that's that's the that's the advantage right so that's why the second iteration because we are still in the same neural network, but the initially is doing a filtering kind of a conventional uh, layer. Then after that, it's going to more inner layers, inner uh, neural network techniques where we can define these additional uh, methods to even uh, do the deep learning. Like let's say, for example, a simple example, uh, we send an image, uh, it's initially identify the patterns, then we send that again into another layer it an analyze uh, more patterns, more complex patterns for the same image like that. So now it knows the basic pattern and the complex pattern. So now if you send a new image, it can really goodly identify uh, based on this complex pattern. So that's what we are doing in the final layers where you can see uh, the accuracy is quite uh, improved, right? So the last one you can see is improved to the 0.8, right? And the loss is reduced, but we started with uh, higher loss and the accuracy is around 0.3 when you're starting off the neural network. When you end of the neural network, it's increased into 0.8. So it's really accurate enough. Then we can evaluate here. So we can see uh, accuracy uh, loss here. Then we can do the prediction and we can uh, do a sample prediction. And uh, here uh, we can uh, get a sample uh, data set and we can even plot that, right? So we can identify that plot that uh, and you can see uh, when you plot that it identify if you get a sample image and we and uh, we connect that with the result set and it identify as a airplane right so like that uh, you know it's accurately we can do that so likewise uh, we can set up a cnn uh, with these uh, complex layers right but uh, is uh, we can see uh, there are only few lines of code right it's around 20 to 30 lines of code to create a completely working uh, CNN neural network, but without KRS, even in TensorFlow, there are more uh, implementation you need to do because TensorFlow use different technique uh, to set up a CNN. But if you use, uh, if you are not using TensorFlow or KRS or anything, if you are using uh, any other frameworks uh, in Python, uh, it involves a lot of uh, implementation. So you need to write a lot of code. You need to. Uh, so here you can see we are just calling the layer and setting up the method. We are just giving ReLU. We are not showing like how the ReLU calculation going to happen. But if you are not using uh, these uh, frameworks, you need to also mention like how to do that calculation, right? So if you are creating that scratch from scratch, you need to even create the calculation method and then you need to set that like that. But here we are setting the keyword only so that there are certain calculation for each of these function. It will be automatically set up. You don't need to uh, set up. It is automatically set up for you. So you can see uh, when going through these layers, it's going to increase uh, this uh, uh, accuracy 
and uh, it's going to give a really good result, right? So you can uh, go through further uh, in that because our time is also uh, going uh, uh, over seven. Uh, so yeah, you can go through about these uh, areas and you can see how it's going to train uh, and how we can improve over time. And uh, compared to machine learning, you can see it's do more advanced filtering and uh, it's going to create these internal uh, networks to identify. And based on the type of data, it's different. So if you are analyzing uh, uh, audio data, it's different. If you're analyzing uh, uh, video data, it's different. So any vision related, computer vision related uh, technologies, we are using CNN, but not only CNN, even there's another tech, uh, technique called uh, GAN, Generational uh, Advisory Network, which is using a generation, a generation of a new image. If you search GAN, uh, you can search where it is going to generate a new image, right? So uh, it's called generative advisorial network where it is going to generate a new image, right? So you, uh, you can input uh, image, uh, some images and based on that, it's going to generate a new image. So it used for image generation and art uh, and video games, things like that. Uh, it used in a lot of industries like even fashion industry, sciences, video games. It used a sim uh, similar technique, right? Uh, this GAN is used. But likewise, there are a lot of uh, other techniques uh, coming from that. But uh, if you are a beginner into deep learning, uh, so you can start from the, the very the popular one, which is CNN, to identify image. Uh, and also using KRS, uh, the process is much simplified. You can easily understand all these things uh, in more uh, simplified me method. So what we did in this demo is uh, we uh, set up TensorFlow, we set up KRS, and we get the sample data set, uh, we uh, look at the data set, what is there, then we uh, create initial conventional layer. Uh, you can see the, the, the accuracy in that around uh, 0.5. Then uh, we set up uh, the inter, in, uh, more inner layers. So inner layers is going through that. So it's taking double the time. So let's say five minutes for the, uh, the initial one, then it will take 15 minutes like that. But uh, you can see the accuracy is quite improved the last uh, level, right? So here you can see the accuracy is quite improved here. Then we uh, get the matrix and we test it with the image and we see that's working, right? It can identify what's in the image like that. So, but remember this uh, is to run this uh, because we have 60,000 images. It might take uh, around 15 minutes uh, because we are using the free version here. So it might take around uh, 15 to 20 minutes to run this uh, but if you have high-end computing uh, environment, uh, server environment, you can get the output within uh, one to two minutes uh, because uh, we have only 60,000 images for this uh, data set to classify. Okay, so you can see uh, uh, the techniques that we have discussed, uh, how, how we can create a CNN-like application. And we are planning to bring uh, more uh, kind of these techniques in coming meetups and also like different startups and other collaboration with other partners. We, have, we plan to bring a lot of these innovative topics. Uh, and uh, I will share the recording of this also. Uh, and also I will uh, share the recording uh, file also uh, in that so you can uh, take a look at it. Uh, maybe I'll attach uh, in the meetup or the, the YouTube link so you can uh, take a look at all the source code. Uh, so uh, if you have any questions, of course, uh, I'm happy to answer. So you can uh, keep engaged to our uh, meetup channel. Uh, so we have uh, every month bringing a lot of innovative topics, uh, areas. So today's session is about uh, deep learning and how you can uh, create a CNN and how you can get a really working output uh, from a CNN using KRS. And we discuss some of the use cases and tools out there. If you have any questions, uh, I'm happy to help. So it uh, seems like no questions uh, at the moment. Uh, so if you have any questions, you can uh, write to us. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, every month we are bringing a lot of innovative topics into the Meetup group. Uh, and we are bringing uh, other speakers also. Uh, there's a London uh, AI Summit uh, in coming months. Uh, you can join that also. Uh, that's uh, having a lot of uh, interesting topic areas in that uh, also. We are looking to have uh, 
some discussion about that also. Uh, so any updates or anything uh, we will share in the meetup group. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask. Uh, so I think uh, today's session was really helpful uh, for you uh, to understand about deep learning and use cases and tools out there and creating a small project uh, on deep learning using uh, CNN. And uh, since we are recording the session, uh, we'll be sharing the recording of this uh, uh, for today's session also in YouTube and we'll share in the meetup group. So thank you everyone for joining uh, today's session. I hope you enjoyed it uh, and uh, see you next time. Thank you.